Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of What The List, the game show where you can get every answer right and still lose. Yeah, that's right, this game makes no sense. Let's check out the rules. The aim of the game is not only to answer questions, but also to guess what the list. Each category is represented by a Mystery Watch Mojo Top 10 list, and each answer in a category is an entry on that list. For every question you answer correctly, you get one point. If you get it wrong, your opponent will have the chance to steal for double points. At the end of each round, you can attempt to name the Watch Mojo Top 10 list. A correct guess nabs you 10 points. Get it wrong, and it's a strike. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins, but whoever has the most strikes gets to embarrass themselves on the internet. All right, let's play What the List. Here are our contestants for today. Woo! I finally got one. <laughs> Yes. No one was safe. This week we have returning new champ, Matt, up against challenger Eliza. So welcome guys. I hope you're ready to get some trash talk in because that is what the name of the game is. Actually, it's what the list, but whatever. <laughs> Uh, Eliza, I've got all my infinity stones and I'm ready to snap. Oh boy. Let's do it. Let's do I'm it. I'm afraid. I'm sweating even more now, but I'm, uh, I'm ready. You never know. You never know. It could be a sneak attack. Let's just see how it goes. It's true. As we were discussing, Eliza is a Jeopardy super fan. So we'll see if that translates to what the list supremacy. Okay, so everybody, we know the rules of the game. Yeah. Matt, you won the coin toss, so you have the opportunity to choose between TV and music for your category. What will you choose? Well, first off, I'm sweating because there's no movies option. Uh, <laughs> okay. Being the movie Mr. Guy. Hollywood doesn't get a film ca category. So very sorry about that. It's okay because I am also pretty knowledgeable when it comes to TV. So Rebecca, I'm going to go with TV. Wait, does that mean we're not going to have a tub humping repeat? <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't remember that. I've blocked that out of my mind. I don't know what that means. Matt, are you ready to play What the List? I'm ready to play What the List. All right. Number 10 in TV. I will just say the original published date of this list was May 24th, 2018. So just keep that in mind. It wouldn't be anything newer than that. Okay. Okay. Got so it. number 10. Fans of this mystery drama call themselves marshmallows. <laughs> mystery drama, marshmallows. Um, clearly I'm not a fan because I don't call myself a marshmallow. Um, <laughs> but I'm just going to go off the clue of a mystery. I'm going to say um, supernatural. Is this what we're going with? That'll ah. be my, is that your final answer? That's what I'm going with. Incorrect. I'm sorry. Oh, I okay. can't. I, I had no idea. <laughs> Eliza, are you interested in a steal? I am gonna pass on that one. I have no idea. <laughs> Let's move on to number nine. Okay. Let's forget that. Let's forget that ever happened. Let's move on to nine. <laughs> for six consecutive years, the primetime Emmy for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Drama Series went to one of the two leads from this 80s police procedural. Yeah, so it's an 80s police procedural, which is kind of throwing me a little bit because I know, I think I know my 90s a little bit better than 80s. I'm a huge Heather Locklear fan and I know it's not TJ Hooker, even though that was in the 80s and Heather's so great uh, with William Shatner. Could it be the other 80s one that I'm thinking of, which is, and I hope I say their names right, um, in the right order. <laughs> I think it's two people. Cagney. Oh. Cagney and Lacey. Correct. Oh, thank God. Thank <laughs> the Lord. Number eight on TV. Although it had been canceled years earlier, in 2009, it became the first animated program to receive a primetime Emmy nomination for Outstanding Comedy Series since The Flintstones. I, I remember it being a big deal, actually. And I'm not going to say The Simpsons. The Simpsons was never canceled. It's got to be Family Guy. I remember this being a, being a thing. And Family Guy originally got canceled and, and, and it obviously surged in popularity and they brought it back. I'm going with Family Guy. You are correct. Yes. I love me you some Family Guy. You caught the clue there. You caught the clue there. Number seven. 
This Netflix series won the GLAAD Media Award for Outstanding Drama Series in 2016 for its representation of LGBTQ characters and themes. 2016. I feel like I they did a lot. They did. <laughs> every day is like a million new Netflix stuff. And I watch a lot of Netflix. So maybe I'm just discombobulated with all these Netflix things I'm trying to think of. Um, I'm going to go with Glow. It's probably not right. Glow? That's what we're going with? Yeah. Incorrect. Yeah. I don't know when Glow began, but I don't know if it's that old. Yeah, I think it might be. No, I guess it is. Yeah, the first season. But yeah, I don't have a clue. Eliza, what do you got? I have two things in mind, but one of them I think is too recent. So that cancels it out. If it's 2016, I want to say Orange is the New Black. Is that what we're going with? That's what I'm going with, Rebecca. Unfortunately, that is incorrect. Oh, oh I would have put money that that was it. Damn, damn it. Now I got to know. Man. As soon as... I'll, I'll let you know when we get to that portion of the show. Okay. Okay. Number six. This short-lived NBC show, which ran from 2016 to 2018, follows a team tasked with stopping a mysterious organization from changing the course of history through time travel. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking Fringe, but I, one, I don't think it's NBC, and two, I don't, uh, it was definitely on way before. Uh, so, <laughs> if we have to go with another, oh! Oh my lord, I am picturing it now. I know exactly <laughs> what this show is, but I don't know the freaking title. I'm gonna, I'll just throw out a guess. I know exactly what it is, and once I hear the answer, I'm gonna hurt, not hurt myself, but be hurt <laughs> internally. Uh, time, it has the word time in it. I'll just say time jumper. It's a guess. Unfortunately, I cannot give you that. Eliza, do you have any ideas? I have the same feeling where I'm like, I think I know the show, I just don't know what it's called. Is it Time Hunter? Is that is that possible? I don't think that's it either, but that's my best guess. Is that what we're going with? <laughs> yeah, Time Hunter. Unfortunately, I could have just made up a show. I cannot give that to you either. Matt, I don't want you to panic. I think there's one more question, but then I feel like the top four is easy question mark okay <laughs> <laughs> so famous last words let's get on to number five starring skeet ulrich this post-apocalyptic tv series centers on the residents of a fictional kansas town after a nuclear attack yeah i know this because i watched it and i think i believe they brought it oh no did they bring it back i'm not sure it's one of those ones that may have come back but regardless i watched the original and it's called jericho you are correct. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the wrong answer. <laughs> You're like, I watched it. It was great. I, you know, and then you were going to be like some other completely different word. Ro uh, I was also confusing <laughs> it with Roswell. Isn't Roswell about aliens? Yeah, but they, but they, yeah, you're right. But they have a similar vibe, I found. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Now we're getting into what I call the easy questions. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> So we look really dumb if we don't get them? Is that yeah, what you're Yeah, I guess saying? that's what I'm setting this up for. <laughs> Number four, Matt. Yes. This police procedural sitcom inspired a controversial French-Canadian adaptation that debuted in 2020. Okay, so my first thought was Bon Cop, Bad Cop, but that's a movie. That's pretty much all I can go on because I don't know this, the second half of this clue. Um, so I'm just gonna go, I'm just going to think of a police procedural sitcom and we'll go with that. So let's... Let's narrow it down to police procedural sitcom. I really thought that was all you needed for this question. <laughs> and, the, and, and Rebecca, just to clarify, this is the easy questions, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what? I actually, I actually don't know, Rebecca. As shocking as this is, I can't, to be honest, I can't think of a police procedural sitcom, and I'm, and I'm really hoping that Eliza doesn't either. So I don't even want to make a guess in case she has the same guess and my guess is wrong and then she narrows I think you down. should though. Oh, okay. Because like, what if you get it right? Like you don't lose anything except you're giving her a clue, but she doesn't have to take it. I was gonna say Ally McBeal, but it has to do with law. It's like a law, it's a law thing. I think what's throwing me off is sitcom because I'm thinking traditional sitcom with like a laugh track and haha. Oh, oh, I talked myself into the answer. It's Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Oh my God. <laughs> See, I always get people, I know, I'm, I, I really like to encourage people to keep going. Yes. Because you can get there. 
You got there, you got there. Well done, well done. All right, now we're at four to zero. <laughs> Going on to number three. This show ultimately did get six seasons thanks to a fan campaign, but so far, no movie. Six seasons in a movie, that, that's, that's gotta be community. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, I think I'm seeing the connecting tissue. I'm just, Ooh. I'm formulating exactly the details, Rebecca. I think I might got okay. something. Yeah. I thought, I thought you might. Hey, where yeah. you That's good list? to know. Okay, number two in TV in mystery category that Matt seems to know. Before inspiring a 2005 feature film, this sci-fi show's episodes were originally aired out of chronological order. I know it because I'm also a fan and I, I, I recently rewatched this show and it's, I recommend it for anyone that hasn't watched Firefly. Firefly. Correct. I yeah. have not watched Firefly. No, you should. And, but watch them, watch them in order. In chronological order. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now, number one, NBC received 29,000 fan letters for this sci-fi show during its first season, more than any other show at the time, except the monkeys. Okay. Hey, hey, where the monk is. People say we're monkey <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure that the title that I'm going to say is my answer doesn't have anything additional with it. Yeah. Um, well. Okay, uh, Rebecca, I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with something called Star Trek. Correct. Yes. Okay, so that's the category. Do you have an idea of what the list? I'm just going to look at the- 10 points. <laughs> I'm going to look at what we've answered. I want to say something like there was fan outrage when they were canceled. Maybe something along the lines of beloved shows canceled too soon uh, or shows canceled that fans brought back. I, uh, will you do it in the form of a Watch Mojo intro? Please? I will do it. In, yeah. Um, <laughs> welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 beloved shows fans petition to bring back i'm going to give it to you okay it's not verbatim but uh i was worried you'd say canceled too soon that and was... uh it's it's not it's not explicitly correct based on all of the entries on this list yes it is top 10 canceled tv shows saved by fans Okay, yeah, that's exactly what I was going for. Yeah, cause... so that's what you're going for. Uh, it's just a, you know, an SEO thing. We just uh, maximized the uh, potential of the title. <laughs> no, um, no, good job. That was, uh, I, I thought you might get it because you were talking about that show that you didn't know the name of, which I will get to. Uh, Can you tell you me know, what the marshmallow is now? Like what fan? <laughs> oh, we'll get there. I will get there. But I thought you were getting it because you were talking about <laughs> fan campaigns throughout. And I was yes. like, okay, I think you got it. You got it. Yeah. So yeah. number 10. Uh, fans of this mystery drama call themselves Marshmallows. Veronica Mars. Oh, that. Okay, that kind of makes sense. It is, but that's not. It's not because her name is Mars. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's because in this, there's a scene where someone says, "You're a marshmallow, Veronica Mars, a Twinkie." Okay, now it doesn't make sense. What? <laughs> uh, Cagney and Lacey, <laughs> Family Guy. This Netflix series is number seven. Oh, this Netflix to... series won the Glad Media Award for Outstanding Drama Series in 2016 for its representation of LGBTQ characters and themes. That is Sense8. Oh, yeah. On to number six. This short-lived NBC show, which ran from 2016 to 2018, follows a team tasked with stopping a mysterious organization from changing the course of history through time travel. NBC also ran Quantum Leap, if I'm not mistaken, but this is, of course, timeless. Oh, that's it, yeah. Now that you say it. <laughs> All right, so we've got Matt with a score of 17 to Eliza zero, but she gets her chance in round two. Let's check it out. Okay, we're on to round two. We're gonna get right into it. Eliza, you got music. Are you ready to play What The List? I'm so ready. I need points. Okay. Deficit Amazing. Points. <laughs> uh, I will also tell you that this list was originally published August 27th, 2016. Okay, all right, okay. So keep that in mind. Won't be anything newer than that. Number 10. This 2011 hip hop song is known for popularizing the acronym YOLO, which stands for You Only Live Once. Well, obviously the song can't be called the same thing as the acronym, so. Hmm. 
I think I'm just going acronyms, acronyms, you know, <laughs> like, uh, I'm sexy and I know it by LMFAO. I, I feel like that. I'm sorry. Right. It is not. Matt, are you interested in a steal for double the points? Yeah, I like Eliza. I have no idea. Um, but I'm, I'll just throw something out. What, what do I have to lose? Is it Pitbull? Is it, uh, he only does stuff that you'd only do if you lived once. Um, let's do Fireball by Pitbull. Pulling out a Pitbull song I've never heard of. And <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That's not the uh, Okay. Yeah, I didn't think so. All right. Let's move on to Eliza's number nine in music. Prominently featured in an Oscar-nominated hip-hop biopic, this 1988 protest song prompted the FBI to write a disapproving letter to the record company behind it. Please keep your answers PG. I love that extra part of the hint because I <laughs> already yeah, felt like I already felt like I had it, <laughs> and then because I was like, okay, the hip-hop biopic, okay, cool. Then the song that was like, woo. Then keep your answer PG. So okay, I'm gonna answer. Incorrectly, but correctly, the PG version. Frack the police, <laughs> shall we say? We shall say, we are correct, yes. Frack the Woo! police. Eliza's finally on the board. We have a score of 17 to one. It is not a shutout. Moving on to number eight. The electronic dance duo behind Party Rock Anthem topped the Billboard Hot 100 for the second time with this song. Okay, so there has to be two songs. I keep thinking about the lyric, I'm sexy and I know it, but like, oh God, please don't cut that out of context and let that be my intro. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, that'd be amazing. Uh, <laughs> it's totally gonna be I was now. like, God damn it. It's gonna be good. It's don't gonna do be non sequiturs like that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just gonna be like the wiggle song. That's wrong. That's definitely wrong, but it's an answer. So So you're saying that that's what we're going with? The wiggle song? Yeah, it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm afraid I can't give you that answer. <laughs> uh, Matt, are you interested in a steal? I'm sexy and I know it. I'll give you that. I will. So yeah, sexy it's just and I know sexy it. and I know it. Sexy but that's and I know the title it. of the song, and I am mortified that Eliza didn't get it after she. Eliza, I, 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 I was wrong it on so many the, counts. And, and, she was combining them. No, I was convinced that was their first hit. Yeah. No, the oh, Wiggle okay. song is also the sexy and I, I know it. Okay, number seven, music. Fine, keep it going, Eliza. Let's, keep going. let's do it. Yeah. Okay, putting a Bahamian musical group on the map. This hit song. Had everybody asking the same question in the early 2000s. I come from Caribbean people. And so if I don't know what songs from Caribbean people end up on the radio, that would be bad. So who let the dogs out? Who, 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 Yeah, we did that. Who okay, that is correct. <laughs> a doggy and nothing if you don't have a bone. Oh, doggy, oh, okay, sorry. Okay, <laughs> uh, I, you, you're making me realize I've literally never heard the whole song. I've only ever heard oh, the chorus. Oh, the chorus. It's a fun song. Yes, yes, Let's yes. go on to number six. Slowly. We've got some momentum going. Prominently featured in the road drama, Easy Rider. This was the first song to mention heavy metal in the lyrics. Oh, that is interesting. It is. Does that mean it's a heavy metal song or they just say heavy metal? I'm afraid that's... I can't have, I can't. Yeah, no, you can't answer that. No, that's too, that's way too pointed. Is it, okay, is it Born to be Wild? Is that what we're going with? Yes, that's what we're going with. Correct. Yeah! Woo! All right. <laughs> I just started thinking of the lyrics and I yeah. was like, now I got I it. Yeah, like smoke and lightning. Heavy metal thunder. There you ah, go. Ah, there you so go. With the wind. Yeah, you know. These you music know, categories I can stop. sing a lot. Number five, again, momentum is with you. The video for okay. this song prompted Kanye West to interrupt Taylor Swift's acceptance speech for best female video at the 2009 MTV Video Music Awards. Okay. Like, I know it, it's one of those things where it's like, it's a moment, right? We all know it, but I just wanna like think it through and make sure I'm saying it properly. The song, I just wanna make sure I get it right because there's parts to it. There's brackets, like there's punctuation. It's not just a song. Mm. Single ladies, open bracket, put a ring on it, closed bracket. Correct. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I would have accepted single ladies, but I appreciate the punctuation and attention to thank detail you. in oh, your thank answer. You. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Number four. In between releasing two movies where he battled aliens, a rapper turned actor recorded this Grammy-winning hip-hop tune with the chorus, 
na 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 na. <laughs> trying to, do... <laughs> I'm trying not to give it away, but it's. I feel like it just gives it away. Na 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 na. Getting jiggy with it. <laughs> correct. Wit. Wit it. That is correct. That is correct. It is wit it. All righty then. Number three. This was Snoop Dogg's first number one on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100, and. In December 2009, it was named the most popular rap song of the decade by Billboard. Okay, all right. A lot of information. I have to look mm. at the question again. I feel like Snoop Dogg's first big hit was, I don't know if I'm getting the title right, but oh God, oh damn it. See, this sucks. This is like, I know what it is, but I don't know the name. Snoop Dogg, what's my name? No, that's not it. I'm afraid I cannot give you the correct yeah. points. Dang it. Matt, are you interested in a steal? It's a really great song. Ain't nothing but a G thing. Incorrect. Oh, okay. That was my shot in the dark. Number two is this. This song begins with the lyrics. I'll just do it. This here's a tale for all the fellas trying to do what those ladies tell us. And there's more, but I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Okay, that sounds familiar, but now what's the song called? I don't know the rest of the lyrics. I'm just thinking like, mm, yeah. mm, mm, you know, like, and then, okay. Da, 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 and then it's, there's a, there's a woman singing at one part. I'm sure. I'm sure there's like, like a chorus in the middle of it. Bust a move? Is that what we're going with? Is it bust a move? Yeah. Bust a move. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> just bust a move. <laughs> All right. Cool. So what's our score? We have a score of 19 to six. But Eliza okay, can catch right. up, uh, not not all the way, but qu quite well if she gets what's the list after a correct answer here. Number one, this pop rap song is known for prominently sampling Rick James's Super Freak. Doo -doo. <gasps> Doo -doo -doo. I sang myself into it. Doo -doo. You can't touch this. Correct. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I'm telling you, I know people don't like to sing out loud on the internet, and embarrass themselves, <laughs> but it really but it helps. Works. It works. I gotta tell you. All right, cool. It's fine. So at the end of the round, Eliza's got seven points. If she gets what the list, she gets 17 and is very much still in this game. So Eliza, any ideas? Let me look at these again. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was, at first I was thinking that it was like titles that had somehow become expressions or something, but some of those don't really make sense. So the more I'm looking at it, the more I feel like these are songs where you repeat that over and over again. Because all these songs repeat that lyric over and over again. Here we go. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 songs that repeat their titles. I'm sorry, no. The most repetitive song no. titles? No, that's all right. Oh, I'm dang sorry. it. Okay. That's a strike. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Matt, do you have any ideas? Here she is. Um. Well, they're all very catchy, earwormy songs. Eliza was on to something about the, the repetitiveness, but all the titles seem to be telling you stuff or asking you questions. Um, so are you are you, are you you throwing it in to tell? Or I'm going to throw in, if I had a white towel, well, I can't throw in my hoodie. I'm throwing it in. No guesses. Uh, I got nothing. Ooh. All yeah. right. Well, let's go through the ones that you didn't get. Number 10. This 2011 hip hop song is known for popularizing the acronym YOLO, which stands for You Only Live Once. That's The Motto by Drake featuring Lil Wayne. Number three. This was Snoop Dogg's first number one on the US Billboard Hot 100. And in December 2009, it was named the most popular rap song of the decade by Billboard. Snoop! Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Yeah. Oh dang! Oh, I was so convinced it was. That's his called. That's older what's my name. Song. Okay, so I guess that one didn't hit the. What's my name? Um, have I given you the list yet? No. No. I, I, forget. Okay. I need to know. <laughs> it is top ten. Oh, Eliza, you're gonna kick yourself. Uh, because I'm probably <laughs> top super ten close, songs right? that started okay. catchphrases. You said, like, I would have given you that if you had gone with that. I did. I started with that. Oh, man. But yeah, I didn't really say you're it right. right. No. That's so funny. So that started yeah, if you had said Like, your expressions oh, one, see, if, you had, if you had said that, I would have given you that. But that wasn't the one that you, like, went with. Technically, 
Matt got a strike there because he didn't answer, so that's a strike too. That's true, that's true. So you both got strikes, which uh, I love to see. All right, so we have got a score of 19 to seven for Matt. And now we're going into the lightning round where anything can happen. All right, let's get to it. Okay, lightning round. Eliza, you are trailing, so you get to decide if you want to go first or second. You know what? I think I'm just gonna go for it. I think I'm just gonna jump in. I'm gonna okay. go first. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, Matt, we're gonna kick you off the call. We will see okay. you soon. Okay, sounds good. All right, bye. Okay, bye. bye. <laughs> Eliza, I am going to give you the title and criteria, and I want you to pay special attention to the criteria this time because it's important. Okay. And you have a minute on the clock to name as many of the entries on the top 10 as possible. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. The title is Top 10 Food Mascots. For this list, we've looked at the invented mascots of supermarket products only, so no restaurant characters and no spokespeople. We've also ruled out cereal brands because both of those are lists for another day. Go. Okay. <laughs> I was like, fast food, great. Okay, supermarket, great, no cereal. <laughs> F, okay. Uh, food mascots that aren't cereal. All I can think of is the cereal ones. Let me just get these out of my head quickly. All I can think of is uh, the Cheerios thing, the B. And um, wow, I might actually get none of them. I'm gonna have to think about this for a second. <laughs> Food mascots that are not cereal. What else do people eat? Oh God, I can't think of anything. This is bad. Okay. Um... Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> oh God. Okay. This might um, be the first meltdown on what the list. <laughs> yeah, could it be? All right, awesome. Okay, it's a first. That's something. That's that's positive. First. Um. I can't think of anything. Honestly, all I can think of is cereal mascots. That criteria completely destroyed me. Oh wow. No. Oh my God. I got nothing. Are there mascots that aren't on cereal? First of all, you just blew my mind. <laughs> I'm sorry for yelling. I'm just shocked. I mean, yes. <laughs> we like did a what? Whole <laughs> or, or fast food? That's You'll all see. I can think of. All right. So I'm going to give you the title and the criteria. And again, the criteria is really important this time. Okay. So uh, also, I'll tell you, Eliza got zero. Oh, no. So hard. are you ready? Hard is this? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> OK, the title is Top 10 Food Mascots for this list. We've looked at the invented mascots of supermarket products only, so no restaurant characters and no spokespeople. We've also ruled out cereal brands because both of those are lists for another day. Go. All I'm thinking is cereal brands, uh, so let's get out of there. Um, Pillsbury Doughboy. Uh, the Hamburger Helper Hand. Um, Okay, uh, those two come to mind. What about the Keebler? What are they? The Keebler Elves? Is that what they are? Those little cookie guys? Uh, let's do... Uh, isn't Robin Hood a guy for flower? Robin Hood? Betty... Betty Crocker. Betty Buns. Betty Crocker. Um, uh, like a squirrel for peanut butter. Squirrely. Um... <laughs> I don't think that's his name. Uh, oh, uh, no, no. Uh, oh, I, I'm trying to think in my fridge what, what, what has little mascots on there in my cupboards. Uh, um, what about, oh, the, the Nestle Quick Bunny. Uh, Nestle Quick Bunny. Did I get All any? All right. I mean, Pillsbury Doughboy's got to be on there, right? All right, Matt got... Three and an H and an honorable mention. Matt got three. No way! And an honorable mention. Okay, we've got number ten, the Jolly Green Giant. Number nine, the Coca-Cola Polar Bears. Number eight, oh, yeah. Mr. Peanut for Planters. Number seven, okay. Chester Cheetah. I'm very surprised you got the hamburger helper hand, but <laughs> he uh, he, me out. he's called the helping hand. But yes, you did get that. Nesquik Bunny, also known as Quickie. Uh, the California Raisins, oh. Kool-Aid Man, Poppin' Fresh, also known as the Pillsbury Doughboy, and the M&M's Spokes Candies. 
With the honorable mentions going to the Vlasic Stork, Humpty Dumpty, the Keebler Elves, Punchy from Hawaiian Punch, and for the kids of the 90s, Fido Dido from 7-Up. Oh man. All right, so Matt got three correct. So that's for two points each for a correct answer. That means he goes from 19 to 25 and Eliza's got seven. So Matt remains our reigning champ. Congratulations, Matt. Thank you so much, Eliza. Thank you. That was fun. But you're not off the hook yet. You're not off the hook yet. Neither oh. of you is off the hook. Oh. You've both got a strike. <gasps> I thought it was two strikes for an hour. <sighs> no. Do I have to, I have to give a story too? Yeah. Hard bargain. This is the show where you win and lose at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Eliza, since you uh, lost, you can go first. Embarrassing story. Okay. Picture this. It sounds like I'm making it up because it's one of those things where I'm like, really? That seems like someone wrote a scene for a comedy. So in college, oh, let me preface this first by saying that I hate team sports, like with a passion. I hate team sports. I don't like them. I don't like high school gym class. Anyways, so in college, or what we call here Seja, but let's just call it college, uh, I had to play basketball one day with my teammates with my classmates and we were playing and I was like, eh, boo, this sucks, but whatever, I'll just run around. And somehow by some miracle, I ended up getting the ball. And I was like, whoa, this is crazy. And somehow there was like an empty path to the net. So I said to myself, well, I don't like sports, but hey, now's my chance. So I ran enthusiastically, scored in the basket, turned around triumphantly to my teammates, like, <sighs> you know? And everyone's face is just like totally fallen. <laughs> Cause I scored in my own net. <laughs> Look, we just did top 10 own goals in professional sports. Oh my. So at least it wasn't a professional game. You oh know? yeah, I have. I had an excuse. <laughs> I was forced to be there. <laughs> All right, Matt, your turn. Okay, so like Eliza, I also have an embarrassing gym class story. Don't we uh, all? This is also, yeah, this one's in high school. I don't know if it was grade nine or grade 10 for me, but um, we were playing ball hockey. And I remember this very vividly because we were outside, we're playing ball hockey. Can I pause you for was, a second? Uh, Canadians call it ball hockey. Yes. Uh, and we call ice hockey, hockey. Continue. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. Now, there was, a there was a guy in my class who was, he was trying to pants people. He was a troublemaker, Ooh, okay? Ooh, I know how old I you are. <laughs> <laughs> I won't shame him on the internet, but you know who you are. So, I, I mean, I didn't think I was going to be targeted because, you know, I was de I was defense, by the way. Um, and here's what happened. The ball goes on the other side and everyone's chasing it. Thank the Lord, because this classmate comes by and decides to pants me Unfortunately, he also got a hold of my underwear. So everything comes down. Like I said, thankfully everyone was on the other side. No one really saw it except for the goalie because I was defense and he got mm. quite the mooning. <laughs> so he also he also probably can't forget this moment either. So There you go. Yeah. And there was a there was a scourge of pantsings in the late 90s early 2000s, I feel like when snap pants are very popular. Yes. Yeah. No one was safe. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Just Thank you guys for sharing your embarrassing stories. And I should say also uh, allowing me to not share an embarrassing story this week. Uh, thanks so much for playing. I hope you guys had fun and I hope you guys had fun. And if you want to be a contestant on What The List, I want to encourage you to email us a video telling us why you would be a good candidate to be on the show. Email us at WTL at watchmojo.com and we will consider you. All right, see you next time, guys. Bye.